Well, good morning. Uh, this is the fifth uh, Sunday in Pentecost. Uh, and there's some reason for some candle, uh, for some uh, balloons and a different lot of uh, coloured drapes. Uh, you might find out about that a bit later on, but maybe you won't. Um, for those who don't know, and I look around and I suspect that at least in this worship centre, you all know that uh, my name, well, maybe not. There's one that may not know that my name is Michael Strong. Uh, I hope I do. Um, and uh, together with uh, John Humphrey, our um, leader of the team, Minister of the Word, um, will be steering us all uh, through this time of worship. Uh, on the communion table, we have three symbols. We have the cross as a reminder of God's love. We have the Bible, which uh, is a great source of information about God. And we have the Christ candle to shine in a world that revels in darkness at times. Uh, and so now's the right time for me to light the Christ candle. It's interesting for me to see next to the candle there is still uh, the broken remains uh, of a coffee cup. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be referred to a bit later on, uh, but you never know with uh, our worship time here at St Matthew's at the moment. Great is our God, more glorious uh, than telescope or microscope uh, to, dis for, to disclose the world. Great is our God, more beautiful than artist's brush or poet's pen can ever portray. Great is our God, more loving than any love song or high anthem can ever extol. And we come here to find peace. May the peace of Christ be with you. So rather than just be an assembled group, um, now is the time for us to pass the peace in whichever way you feel comfortable to those who are nearby. You want me closer? Some people wander, don't they? I've been advised to get closer to the microphone. Can you hear me now? Okay. We acknowledge the Gadigal people um, of the Aora nation. They're the traditional custodians of this land under God. Uh, and we commit ourselves again to working for reconciliation between all peoples who inhabit this land. Now, I've got a bit of news for you. Did you know what happened on the 21st, 20th of this month? 20th of June? No. Oh, you are clever. How many else did knew that? Uh, and did you know what happened yesterday, 47 years ago? Uh, you don't need to answer the questions. 
<laughs> as it was yesterday. Uh, but it was the birth of the Uniting Church. Um, and Sharon Hollis, who at the moment is president of the Uniting Church Assembly, among other things, she said this. We are one church across a great diversity of beliefs and practices, ways of being and doing and thinking about what it means to be the Uniting Church. This is what the Uniting Church should be. And if you go and Google um, the Uniting Church Assembly, you'll get lots of information about um, the beginning of the Uniting Church. Now it's time for a period of prayer of thanks and uh, praise. Let us pray. Beautiful you are, Lord, joy of the universe. From you flow every good thing and perfect gift. For the positive people who surround each, us each day, family, friends, pastors, fellow church members, colleagues, co-workers in community projects, and those who play sport beside us, we thank you, generous provider. For your own spirit fostering our curiosity, for minds that explore the hidden nature of the universe, for choice souls who know the depths of human nature, and for hearts that thirst for stronger faith and seek fellowship with their creator, we thank you, generous provider. For the capacity to grow and to change, for the absorbent minds of the young, the restless seeking and testing of adolescent, for the rich opportunities of the middle years, and for the time for reflection given to the elderly, we thank you, generous provider. For the peace of Christ in the storms of life, through setbacks in employment, tensions in relationships, financial pressures, family and marriage crises, and through sickness, handicap, and during times of racking grief, we thank you, generous provider. Beautiful are you, joy of the universe, from you flow every good and perfect gift. Amen. Now is the time for us to sing our first song. Um, uh, the words were originally written in German um, by Joachim Neander. Uh, and he was born uh, in 1650 and unfortunately had a, f a short life. He died at the age of 30. Uh, from TB, uh, but a couple of year, a couple of hundred years later, uh, Catherine Winkworth decided those German words were too good to stay only in German, and so she translated the German into the words that we're going to sing today. Praise to the Lord Almighty. Thanks, David.
Now let us ask God, God's ongoing grace um, to link with us as we bring our prayers of confession. Let us pray. Loving God, your Christ creates a dilemma for us. The light of his words and deeds put us to shame. Therefore, we may sometimes try to evade his searching glance. Yet his is, is the only complete love with the capacity to rescue us from evil. Therefore, we constantly need him and hunger for more of his strength in our lives. Please give us the courage to help to welcome both the profound comfort and the considerable discomfort which Christ brings. Help us to face squarely those sins which his light easily exposes and to see deeply into our secretive souls where the rebel evil hides and schemes. We do not ask for the superficial makeover, but for a radical repentance and the, the stringent activity of Christ's saving grace. Come, Spirit of the merciful Christ, open all the dark places, wash, purge, and absolve us. Heal our disordered nature and grant us your peace. In you we place our trust today and always. Amen. Jesus, whose words outlast all other words, says that he didn't come to heal the healthy, but the sick. Not to find the righteous, but to call sinners to repentance. The good news, my friends, is that when we reach the point of repentance, we are utterly forgiven through Christ Jesus. And now it's... Time for some learning together. Thanks, John. Good morning. Happy birthday to us. Happy birthday to us. Happy birthday, the Uniting Church. Happy birthday to us. So as Mike said, yesterday was the 47th anniversary of the Uniting Church in Australia. Um, I'm not going to blow out the candle, which is the tradition, because the candle, as we've said, is the light of Christ and the symbol of the Holy Spirit. Um, the reality, though, is that in the 47 years that we've been together, does anyone know, by the way, which congregation, which denominations joined together to form the Uniting Church? Presbyterian, Congregation, Methodist. And most of the Methodists, about half of the Presbyterians, and a lot of the congregations joined together. There are still a few congregational churches around and the Presbyterian... Oh, I blew it out. <laughs> are still going. But that's the symbol today. 47 years we've been the church together and probably for a large part of the beginning of that time, we were struggling to work out what it means to be the church together and how we merged different denominations and traditions and rituals together. And then we struggled with issues like baptism and a lot of stuff like that. And my sneaking suspicion is we spent a little bit too much time looking inward and we haven't spent enough time looking outward. And since the 47 years, we've seen statistically a decline in the Uniting Church, as we have seen in most mainstream denominations. So the symbol of the broken mug 
We are the body of Christ. We are formed by Christ. We are clay vessels. Um, but sometimes we keep putting the light out. And we have to keep coming back to Jesus, who is God with us, and let the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God, relight our flame. If you haven't read The Basis of Union, I encourage you to do that. Um, the last sentence is that we journey with God towards the promised end. We may be broken. We may keep blowing the candle out. But God keeps igniting our passion. And as we return to God in prayer, God can still use us, bring us back into full being, and we can be the church that we are called to be. So as we celebrate the anniversary of the church, today we're going to be doing some more thinking about what does that mean to be the uniting church in Australia. Well, we're going to sing together the great Talus Cannon, O Christ the Healer. Good morning. <clears throat> the reading is taken from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind. 
and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who is this then, that even the wind and the sea obey him? <clears throat> the second reading is from 2 Corinthians, chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an ac acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonment, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honour and dishonour, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many riches, many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections but only in you, yours. In return, I speak to you as children. Open wide your hearts also. In this we hear the word of God. Thanks be to God. Um. I don't usually criticise translations of the Bible, but that one where it says the, the disciples were in awe of Jesus is a slight mistranslation. Check out the newsletter, which is now up. Some of you might have got an email saying that the website was down. I fixed the website. Well, I didn't fix it. I just plugged the cord in and everything worked again. But, <laughs> That, so if you're watching online, you can clearly have worked out the website. So. But I, I have to say you here, the translation, the Greek, is double fear. And in their theory, they were fearful. It's, it's not war. It, it, they were afraid. And that's something you should think about. Um, the United Church, we are the church. This building is not the church. And so I thought it was appropriate to sing this classic little song. I don't know if you know it. You should if you don't. Um, that's why I'm teaching it for you if you haven't learned it before. But, Christine, if you can keep up, that would be great. <laughs> Church, we are the church together. All the 
unlucky in Australia that that isn't usually the case for people of religion. But there are people in the world who, because of their faith, suffer beating, imprisonment, and riots. Riots against them. And we saw it almost. And unfortunately, there were Christians that were rioting uh, recently when a bishop was stabbed in the service. That's not how it should be. Often it's people um, causing problems against people of faith. In hard work, sleepless nights and hunger, impurity and understanding, patience and kindness, in the Holy Spirit and in sincere love. In truthful speech and the power of God with weapons of righteousness and the right hand and the left, those are all good things that lead us into glory and dishonor, bad reports and good reports, genuine yet regarded as impostors, known yet regarded as unknown, dying yet to live on. Some people say the church is dying. But I would claim that we will live on because the church is not the people and those who gather. The church is who God brings together. And if something's dying, it's probably because we're not as connected to God as we should be. Beaten yet not killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, poor yet making many rich, not materially rich. I'm fairly sure Paul was talking about rich in spirit. Um, and having nothing yet possessing everything. So for Paul, as he's talking to the Corinthians who are arguing with themselves and there's all this disunity, and he's giving them a good swift kick to say, get your act together. Remember, it's not about finding in yourself or who to follow, it's about love. So 1 Corinthians, that classic. You are a body, there are many gifts, many talents, and the greatest of things that you can do is love, and love is patient, kind, generous, it's not boastful, arrogant, or rude, it's not self-seeking, doesn't keep a record of wrongs, all that stuff that you hear at weddings so often. That actually leads us out of our comfort space. The church isn't a resting place. And so when the United States stand together, it publishes a statement to the nation. And this is what it wrote. It's put in big, large, I forget the name of when you take out a full page in the United States. Full page. Well, no, it's a full spread. Then whatever it is. They took full page advertisements in the news. People of the Congregational Methodist and Presbyterian Churches have united a new church has been born. And what is the mission? This isn't a doctrinal statement. This is a statement of mission. We, who are members of the First Assembly of the United Church in Australia, address the people of Australia in this historic moment. The path to the unity has been long that time. Let's face it, the whole idea of the United Church was when people were coming into federation and we thought, why do we have seven different colonies? Maybe we should just have one country. People thought, why do we have all these different churches? The Church of Scotland, the Church of Rome, the Church of England. Wouldn't it be good to have an Australian church? 77 years later, two and a half churches managed to pull it off. So it was a long journey, but we believe this unity is a sign of reconciliation we see for the whole human race. We acknowledge with gratitude that the churches from which we have come have contributed in various ways to the life and development of this nation. A Christian responsibility to society has always been regarded as fundamental to the mission of the church. Debunking this whole idea that politics and religion don't go together. Politics shouldn't be, you know, we shouldn't have politics in the church, but the church should lead us into changing society. In the United Church, our response to the Christian gospel, that is the message of Christ, will be 
continue to evolve us in social and national affairs. We are conscious of our responsibilities within and beyond this country. We particularly acknowledge our responsibilities as one branch of the Christian Church in the region of Southeast Asia and Pacific. In these contexts, we make certain affirmations at the time of our inauguration. So 47 years ago, this was our commitment. We affirm the eagerness to uphold Chinese Christian values and principles, such the importance of every human being, the need for integrity in public life, and the proclamation of truth and justice. This is where that leads us out of our comfort bubble and pushes us into the realms of social engagement, and that is where we will start getting the pushback. Because truth and justice are not always popular. We affirm the rights of each citizen to participate in the decision making in the community, religious liberty and personal dignity, and a concern for the welfare of the whole human race. So we wonder why the United Church is involved in climate justice. We pledge ourselves to see the correction of injustices wherever they occur. We will work for the eradication of poverty and racism within our society and beyond. We're still working at that because there's still a lot of poverty in Australia and in the world. We affirm the rights of all people to equal educational opportunities, adequate health care, freedom of speech, employment, dignity and unemployment if work is unavailable. Some people go, well then, why if we're about equal educational opportunities, how come the United Church has reached the leaders of public schools? Well, they weren't reach the leaders when we started them off. They've just evolved in the competitive market feedback. But they still, actually, if you want to change the world, you want to get rich people to release their wealth so that there is equity in the, in the world. Just go and rich people, you rob rich people, you should give your money away. Not likely to work. But if we work with those people who actually seek a quality of education that send their kids to our school, to come from the upper socioeconomic boundaries, we get a chance to influence those lives every day. There are more, there's something like 20 to 30,000 young people come to the United Church every day through United Church schools in New South Wales alone. It's a hugely small matter. That's why I was a school chaplain. So we will oppose all forms of discrimination which infringe basic human rights and freedom. We will challenge values which emphasize inclusiveness and greed and the disregard the needs of others which encourage our higher standing of living to the privileged in the face of the daily widening gap between the rich and the poor. That becomes problematic for us who are effectively on the upper end of the echelon. So how do we as a church work towards that? We're concerned with basic human rights of future generations and will urge the wide use of energy, the protection of the environment, the replacement of the earth's resources and their use and enjoyment. Just think, it was 47 years ago, we were making amazing visionary statements about energy and use of the environment. The United Church has always been a green church. We may not live that way in our congregational level all the time, but the United Church has always said itself, this is what we should be doing. Finally, we affirm that the first religion of Christians is God, under whose judgment and policies and the actions of nations must pass. We realize that sometimes this allegiance may bring us into conflict with the rulers of our day. But our United Church as an institution within the nation must constantly 
with stress universal values which must find expression in national policy if humanity is to advance. That is the slide. The church is not a resting place. We pledge ourselves to hope and to work for a nation whose goals are not guided by self interest alone, but by concern for the welfare of all persons everywhere. The family of one God, the God made known in Jesus of Nazareth, the one who gave his life for others. In the spirit of his self giving love, we go forward. It's an amazing state, an amazing vision. It's not doctrine, but it clearly links us back to our beliefs. And if you haven't read the basics of union, as I said, you should read that. Why are we afraid to do it? Have we no faith? Or why aren't we seeing that all the way through our church all the time? Are there ways that we can grow? So the work today um, is bringing on this word, component, which is a Greek word which means being patient, enduring, steadfast, constancy, and standing under. We stand under the will of God that we've made known in Christ, then where should that be leading us to? So, <coughs> our active discipleship has the statement of the nation to the nation there. And on the back, on this side, is just give yourselves a progress report, either as an individual or as a Matthew. Check the boxes that we're doing well and circle things that we might need to improve. As we seek to grow and we see them growing together, which we're always doing, and as we're thinking about our mission or mission, for the next few years, this is a good place to start. Where St. Matthew's Uniting Church, how are we living out as the United Church? Are we aware of things that are happening? We need maybe connect more with some of this bigger stuff if we to see how this is growing. But in all this, let us look to God. It's not about us doing more by ourselves, but seeking to listen to what is God calling us to do. And if God calls us into compassion, how do we love those in this area and in the wider world? If this is a compelling vision, surely others will want to join us. And if others are not wanting to join it, maybe we are either not sharing the vision, we haven't caught it ourselves, or we're not sharing it in the right way. There's some key questions that we can keep asking. But God is faithful, and if we're faithful to God, then we will see growth in the spirit of a self-giving life. We see him go forward. Amen. We're going to sing a song about God's compassion. God when human bonds are broken. <laughs>
that we are blessed by God, we seek to be a blessing in return, to give of ourselves to the work of God in the world, the bringing nearer of the kingdom. One of the ways we do that is our prayers, we do it through the life of our community, and we support the ministry of the church. So if this is something you wish to contribute to, your offering to God's work in the world is to be received. Receive all that we offer, God. Take all that you need. Use us and all that we are, that we might be your people and be a blessing to all in this world. In your name. Community news. Fourth of July, we're not just celebrating the um, whatever. Um, we're also having Tom Booth come and talk about what makes something treasure. Um, our op shop continues to serve the community. Um, if you haven't checked out the bridal expo down there, go and look at it even if you're not interested in getting married <laughs> or don't know anyone. It's just an amazing setup. It's just it looks really professional. Just go and just be in awe of the wonder that is looking at there. Um, there's just some really nice stuff there. And care and prayer is happening on the 2nd of July coming up. Is that each month? And in July, we need to work it. We're going to have the presentation. Thank you, Tom. Good morning. And on this fifth Sunday uh, after Pentecost, it's interesting that the, that remembers the spirit of God coming. And we've thought of our birthday as the beginning of the Uniting Church. And uh, many of us are confident in believing that the spirit guided us to come to be a church where all are welcome and where people who long to see others come to worship God with us. A prayer for the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. Holy Spirit, as you come upon us again today, we ask you to renew God's vision within us for our church. Spirit, you open to us the meaning of Jesus' life for the whole world, and that provides us with an example for our journey together. Spirit, your presence among us is God's pledge and foretaste of the hope of that promised day when the whole of creation will be reconciled and renewed. Spirit of wisdom, there are times when we don't know what words to pray because the task before us seems so daunting. By faith we look to your promise given in Romans chapter 8 that when we are weak, when we don't know what to pray, your promise is that your spirit will pray for us Spirit of God, join us in our prayers today and every day. Lord, in your mercy, we say together, hear our prayer. Prayer for those in need. We pray for people living with disabilities in the world, that they will receive the support and care they need to allow them to live a life where they are able to make life choices that are real. We pray for those with an intellectual disability, those with autism, paranoia or schizophrenia. We ask that you will continue to bring a light and hope to them and their families who face the challenge of caring for these loved ones. We think of others in need of your grace to continue to live where they are. We remember those who live in communities where there is sexism, racism and coercive violence that is used by those who have power 
We beg that you would raise leaders who will work to bring relief to the needy, especially to our Indigenous young people who are disproportionately incarcerated. May these young people be respected and given equal opportunities so that they may become leaders who will build equality for all disadvantaged people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayer for peace. Lord, we pray for peace in the world in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for countries to find diplomatic solutions so that there may be harmony between the nations. We ask especially for the terrible situation in Gaza, the death and destruction in Ukraine, the torture and war in Myanmar, and the violence in other places. We pray that in those disastrous conflicts, that the oppression and violence will be brought to an end. We remember all those who have had to flee their homes due to persecution and conflict. Guide those people that they may find loving communities where they can settle and find healing from trauma. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A prayer for those who are sick, grieving, or in other forms of distress. Loving God, we come to you to ask for your healing hand on those known to us in need of healing, comfort or care. We know that you love us and those whom we love. Indeed, your love is offered to all people. God, because you desire good for your creation, we pray confidently that you will act mercifully to those we bring to you in the silence of our hearts. And we just think for a moment of people you want to bring to God. May these people experience your abundant love and may they continue to look to you for their healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our prayer for God's love to spread through us to our community. Merciful God, we remember the mercy you have shown us in granting us new life together in Jesus. By your spirit, continue your work of transforming us to be a church community that expresses your love, humility, justice and hope with those who have yet to experience your goodness. Open us so that we will become a community that draws in and accepts young people, new families, those who live alone and those who live with fear, for those without accommodation and for those who have been hurt by others. By your spirit, bring this vision and hope to fruition for our vulnerable and hurting community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And this is the final time for us to pray a blessing on Daniel and Nicole. We remember the fun Daniel brought as he taught the word, your word to the young people, the time he dresses a bee to tell us to act and, uh, and follow the... Uh, the Beatitudes. Father, we, um, Heavenly Father, we commit Daniel and Nicole to your care as they move to a new ministry at Taramara. Give them ears to hear what people in their new church have to share and give them eyes to notice the young people and children who may be overlooked. You've given them generous hearts and have prepared the way for them. Go with them, Lord, and make your face to shine upon them so they will remain open to your guidance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And together we say the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. I deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our final song today is one that picks up some of that essence of the statement to the nation, the community of Christ who makes the church of Christ. <laughs>
community of Christ, who made God's cross our own, let us go into the world in his self-giving love, that others may catch the vision of the kingdom. And may God bless us that we might be a blessing. May God love us that we might be the love of God. And may God give us peace that we may bring peace.